www.sasquatchlore.com. Hello, everybody out there in Sasquatch land. Hey, bro. Uh, welcome to the second installment of this interview that I'm doing with uh, people from the community. The first one we did with uh, Mr. Michael Merchant, aka Snowwalker Prime. And today we have the pleasure of having uh, Rosa Hebe, uh, a director producer uh, from Hollywood, uh, California, that's going to join us today. And we're going to have a little conversation with him about his experience with the Bigfoot community. Hey, Ro, how you doing? How's it going? How you doing, Damon? Thanks for inviting me onto the show today, man. I'm a big fan of, of your website, Sasquatch Lives. I love I love your forums. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You've been a great supporter of the Extinct series too, so big ups to you on that one. All right, hey, you did a good job though with that. I I I, I love it, and I'm a fan too. So excellent, uh, and I like it. So I think uh, you're doing some good things. Uh, it doesn't matter what anybody says if you feel good about it, and you think you're doing something good. That's all that matters in the end. That's what I believe. I I made Damien Bravo a fan. I can check that off my list yes, now. Yes, you can, because I am a fan. Hey, you even got Joe Rogan, Joe, uh, Joe Rogan loving you, man. So that has to be something good. And he's, he's a tough cook to your crack, man. Like, the guy is very straightforward, and he, you know, we, uh, you know, we seen him even talk about Bigfoot. Uh, and in fact, we did put a video up about that. And he, and, and, yeah. Oh, and also, don't forget everybody to check out Rose's uh, site too. Don't, don't forget about that. Bigfootreport.com. Mm -hmm. Which, which, the, that's going to be the place you got to check out his uh, series, which is going to be playing there. Uh, uh, that's once it gets them done, okay? Exactly. All right. Well, no, you know, um, now that uh, you've come into the scene yeah. in the Bigfoot community with your, uh, you know, with your new series, uh, uh, mini documentaries, you know, uh, initially when we met, we actually, we, we talked about that. We talked how mm -hmm. people, some people welcomed you and it wasn't really that right well of a welcome that you expected from the community <laughs> yeah, so tell me about that tell me tell me what happened initially okay. how what was it that drove you to not only believe that bigfoot could exist right but also yeah. do those documentaries and be part of this community like that sure sure i mean that, there's a lot there so you know it goes back to to being a kid you know i i think bigfoot and sasquatch and hominids in general became an interest uh, for me as a very young, as very young child, but what really made me go, I want to look more into this was when I saw uh, the Leonard Nimoy um, uh, special on, on Bigfoot, and it was the first time I'd seen uh, the Patterson film, Patterson Gimlin film. It just blew me away. So going going back even further, I just always been into fantastic things. I love big things. I love dinosaurs and sharks. And when Star Wars came out as a kid, I, 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 I became a Star Wars fan, which became, led me into becoming an Indiana Jones fan, and that started that whole, you know, quest for adventure thing. And uh, you, some years later, I end up, you know, in post-production as a video editor and, and doing some films and television. And, you know, it came to a point where I needed to start doing more projects, and I wanted to do something of, of interest and I love movies and I love horror movies I love mu uh, movies about music and I love monster movies monster movies are my favorite things but I didn't want to be a monster movie producer I wanted to create information um, I'm an information junkie so one thing led to another and I said you know what I, I want to start talking about hominids and uh, I jumped in head first always always online, always part of the community as a spectator, always reading the information, always educating myself. I tend to stay away from chat rooms and forums because, you know, they tend to be flooded with, with trolls and, 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 and people uh, looking for to pick a fight for fun, and I just kind of tend to stay away from it. So when I jumped in, nobody knew who I was. Then I decided, okay, I, I wrote this first editorial. And that was extinct, the first part, the Yeti. And after I wrote this editorial, I was just going to put out a blog and uh, at first and, and see how it goes. But I wanted to like meet some people in the community and maybe go out in the field and, and meet other researchers. I'm no field researcher, so I wanted to get some other perspectives. And the first few people I called, I was met with a lot of resistance, a lot of, 
uh, stay out of our club kind of mentality. You can't compete with us. We've been doing this way too long. There's no room for newcomers. And that just drove me, that just drove me harder to, to get the first one done. I actually did it in a day after I had the editorial written. I just turned on the microphone. I have a recording studio here in my house. I'm a musician. Recorded it, started putting the images together, threw it up, and jumped in head first. And I just didn't expect to become such a huge, uh, not a huge, but get such a huge response so quickly. I mean, I've literally been doing this for a couple of weeks online with my face attached to it. And I've gotten hundreds of emails already and, and met a lot of great people now. And I can do away with that earlier experience of meeting the haters right off the bat because there's a lot of great people out there giving me a lot of support and I'm, I'm having a blast. All right, now, do, do, you, do, you, <laughs> do you think that, uh, uh, you know, in what you're trying to do, uh, is there really a message behind it? Are you trying yeah. to do certain things with that to yeah. bring a, a new way of people to look at this perspective? I know we talked about this before. You know, we, when we had a conversation when we first met, but you know, what is it exactly that you're trying to do with these documentaries and what is that you're trying to give to the community with them? Okay, well, there, there's two parts to that. The first part is, I have mentioned already, I'm no field researcher. I'm an information junkie. So as an information junkie, I'm constantly looking for content. Um, content is pretty limited in this field, and I was surprised. Most people are repeating the same things over and over. So I started studying different theories, and what I decided to bring to the table when I did this, I have a more editorial type of style. It's kind of a, it, it, it's kind of a lecturing approach, but I wanted to make this uh, about changing mindset more than about chasing after the the beast you know i wanted to put something on the table that would maybe make a person who's never thought about hominids or the mis mysterious i wanted to put something on the table that made them say hey that's an interesting subject I i'd like to consider a few of those ideas i'd like to bounce a few of my own off of you and and get a dialogue started and i think i've been a little successful already with just the two films um, people have already opened up to me, and, and, we, and I think I'm doing the right thing because of the type of dialogue I'm getting in, in response. It's exactly, um, it's, it's exactly what I want to do. And the validation was getting emails from, uh, 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 pat on the back from guys like uh, Dr. Jeff Meldrum and Adam Davies, who went after they saw the documentary said, hey, nicely done great to see a fresh approach. So, you know, it, it was, it's been pretty rewarding as well. Now, um, you know, uh, seeing that you, that you are skilled at what you're doing, and we, we, we noticed already that you have some talent in it, I mean, uh, there's other things you've done before that you uh, that you can talk about and, you know, yeah. that got you started before doing this in that kind of medium? Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, it's a theme I'll repeat over and over again. I'm about telling a story. More people, um, more people out there are are trying to uh, take their video cameras out into the field, and, and I think that's great stuff. And they're trying to catch a glimpse, and they're trying to be the first. I'm not trying to do any of that. What I bring to the table is my ability to tell a story, something I've done since I was a teenager. I started as a songwriter. Uh, and writing short stories, I've directed short films, I've directed television series, and you learn about present, you know, the right and wrong way to present information. Um, these webisodes are a little dense. I mean, I barely take a breath from the beginning to the end um, when I'm doing these editorials. But you know, it's a it's a different type of format. But the one thing that I, I try to do, even with these editorials, is create an arc. Present the information, present a challenge, uh, and, and, and tell a story. So I think my skills, like in television, doing the travel show, I did a travel show with my kids where you know, we just would go and discover places, new places we've never been, and, and uh, show families the different things that are happening in your own backyard. And I think I bring that to the table. 
I think the music in my documentaries are is different because I'm a composer and I, I like things to move at a certain pace. So combine that with my storytelling skill, I think that's why these these are striking a chord, whether good or bad, with people. I do get flamed quite a bit. I uh, my latest one on Orang Pendic has has uh, has stirred up and hit some people the wrong way, but I love it. I, I like getting the bad stuff as much as I like getting the good stuff. Well, I, I mean, I you know you you want to make people think. I guess that's what I've gotten from what you've been doing and the ones that mm -hmm. I've watched. So I mean, naturally, in a community where people have opinions, you are going to get different right. type of opinions. And whether it's good or bad, uh, it is an opinion, and they are watching what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people think because I'm laughing and I'm trying to make people laugh that I mm -hmm. don't take it seriously and I'm just some clown um, trying to flame the scene a bit and, 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 and troll, troll people. But that's not the case at all. I just think if you're going to get new people involved, you have to present things a little bit differently. And if someone wants to watch very serious content, there are 10,000 pieces out on the internet that you can find and watch. Mine is not going to be that way. My, my pieces are going to be a little vulgar, a, a little provocative, and um, and at a different pace, you know. And uh, if you, if if you like it, cool. If not, cool. You know, at least I'm striking a chord in one way, shape, or form. Now, tell me a little bit more about, your, about yourself in terms of you know how you got started, you know your life, mm -hmm. where you grew up, you know yeah. how you know you know what led you. Uh, you know, I know you told me that you. So the the in search of episode with Nimoy uh, to see mm -hmm. if, you know, to learn about what Bigfoot or Sasquatch uh, right. is, uh, but what other things also drive you now? Because I know mm -hmm. that you, you even mentioned just a few minutes ago that you want to go onto the field one day and, and also with researchers. I mean, uh, I, yeah, I think that's the next next logical step. You start taking in all this information, and it starts sucking you in further and further to the point where you're like. Yeah, let's go out. Let's have some fun. Let's let's go see what we can drum up. Um, we don't want to be left out. You know, you start getting to that point where you, you start getting uh, so involved with the project, and, and if you're you're passionate, you, you're gonna want to do as much as possible. I made a decision several years ago that if if I was eventually gonna do something like this, I couldn't be 99%. I either had to be a passionate skeptic or a passionate believer. And my choice was to be optimistic, present, uh, and, and skepticism just isn't as fun. So I made the wholehearted decision to be a believer. If I'm going to take people on any type of journey, I have to believe wholeheartedly. And I looked at the evidence, and I made my decision, and I jumped in. And I just said, I don't care if my friends think I'm crazy, because they do. I'm going to get out there and start telling people that this thing, Bigfoot, Yeti, Orang Pendic, um, the Yowie, I'm going to start telling people that they're real because the evidence supports it, I'm passionate about it, and I know how to tell a story. And as you could probably tell, I like to talk about it too, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, did, I put it out on the table, man. I put it out on the table and I see what, 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 uh, what bounces back. Well, I mean, uh, from so far, even myself, and watching the stuff, we uh, we do see a lot of uh, conversations going around about exactly what Bigfoot is. You know, we have the researchers going from one place to another. Some call themselves better researchers than others. Uh, in a yeah. field that really doesn't have a university one-on-one class on how to be right. a Bigfoot researcher. So, right. you know, I mean, how do you feel about that when you get somebody that tells you, look, I'm a researcher, I've done this longer than you. You know, mm -hmm. you don't get in my field because, you know, you, you can't handle right. this. You know? Well, I, I, I took offense to it because I was coming from a, a standpoint of support, you know, and I kind of felt that field researchers don't have the support that they need uh, academically. So things have to pre be presented in a... A, B, C type of order, not not left field. Uh, some of these shows, like Finding Bigfoot, I mean, it's providing more comic relief and doing more harm, I feel, for the cause. You turn on Talk Soup or Chelsea Lately, and they're going viral because of how comical it is. You know, we don't... So, so, this, so, you, so you're saying that there's not really 
a science is not really being applied to that. It's more of an entertainment. Yeah, it, it can't. It can't just be entertaining. It can't just be um, hobbyists. You know, I I technically am a hobbyist, I suppose. But I am reading about anthropology. I'm reading about primatology. I'm presenting a case and providing theories like Lazarus Taxon, which aren't normally applied when you when you see material about yeah but, but also you've been talking to to real scientists before you even yes. you get your opinions from real scientists which you know you know and I know some researchers re others researchers do that but yeah I know some of them do but you know there's others that really don't do that they're just walking around in the woods with a camera trying to see if they can catch Bigfoot you know so now, one of my one of my favorite field researchers is Adam Davies and I've had the pleasure of being able to uh, correspond with him on a daily basis. What he does, why he gets the funding for his expeditions, is he validates everything properly, scientifically, and effectively. If something doesn't seem right, he looks into it, and if it works, he throws it out. He doesn't justify it. He goes on to the next thing. He looks for the scientific validation. If it's there, he goes further. He gets support from universities. He gets support financially from the television stations because he is legitimate. He takes it seriously. He takes a journalistic approach, which I don't feel uh, researchers, you can believe and still question things. You should play devil's advocate and you should be able to apply real theories to your research. You can't just uh, blob squash, you know, that, that's not, doing anybody any good. You can't just blob squash. You have to get evidence. You have to decide if it's real. Be willing to throw it away if it's not strong enough, then dig deeper, you know? And well, so in, in terms of that, I mean, what, what do you think about the community itself? Do you think the community e too easily, right away when something comes out, automatically say, yeah, that's Bigfoot, or no, that's not Bigfoot? Do you think that, that the community sometimes yeah. is, is a little bit too, if you want to say, Kind of like a religious in some ends in terms of, it is. you know, I it see is. a picture of, oh, that's Bigfoot, that's Bigfoot, you mm -hmm. know, and they don't really uh, have the information they should be saying, well, let me think about this first before I say that's Bigfoot, what, what, right. what we don't have, what's missing from that photo that I'm not getting, which mm -hmm. I, like, I think a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. Do you agree and that's or what, do you that's think That's what it's... I like about your columns as well is because you'll put something on blast and I think you have to, and it's going to upset some people, but here's the thing. This is, this is a very um, passionate field. The, these people who are in this field, they don't get any reward for it. So I understand their, their desire to be anxious, their desire to really get behind something. And get and recognition. Do you yeah. think that, they, that, that that's what they want too? They want recognition? Exactly. But they also need to understand that playing devil's advocate is it is is necessary to to get respect you have to be able to look at both sides of the coin before you put your evidence on the table or put your evidence on the table and let the jury decide and don't be offended you know if if it doesn't always roll in your favor you have to that this this field is notorious for accepting garbage and that needs to stop because that's what really uh, creates uh, all this ridicule. I'm not afraid to put somebody on blast. I'll come out and say it. You know, I think it was uh, it terribly irresponsible for for um, Melissa Hovey to say the things that she said uh, about her photo and and not provide. I hope she provides, you know, the other images she says she has. But an image that's you know, I I know how to look at images. The, an image that's been stripped of metadata, that there's no image sequence, uh, holding on to a photo for four years. I mean, we've all read that stuff. It, it, people have to, you have to have good evidence. You can't just tell the story, you know? If you're going to just tell a story, make sure people know that it's a narrative, you know? This is not factual. This is, this is subjective. This is, this is for entertainment purposes. But if you're going to go for hard evidence and you want people to take you seriously, you have to do things the right way. Period. 
So, so you know, so you're saying basically that in a lot of in a lot of cases, people aren't really putting the stuff out the right way they should, in terms of saying, "Hey, I got real evidence." I exactly. mean, and 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 another thing that you know, that some people say they said that you know, in the community, really, some you know, there's a lot of different groups of researchers that they don't get along with other researchers, and also most researchers don't share really their information with other ones. I mean, do you think that's that's something that should be keep that you keep that way that we we, should, we as researchers need to you know, like in for example, the scientific field, people have the peer review. They they do an experiment and they have their own peers from that know about you know the field, look over their their, their scientific finding and prove it to be real or not or, or, or prove it. Right. I mean, there if, is a due process. There's due process. Mm -hmm. in, but but what I'm saying is, and I'm sorry to cut you off, is that yeah. it, the it, same thing in in the Bigfoot community. We have researchers. We have a lot of different researchers who've been doing it for a long time. Why can't they do the same way? Have a peer review of what somebody finds, which I think may happen with some groups, but mm -hmm. doesn't. I mean, have you noticed that since you've been around that you feel that there are different cliques of researchers that really don't mingle with each other? Yeah, I, I do. I, I do. You know, you the, the the big one. The big one. You know, right now everyone's talking about. Uh, Melba Ketchum, and and she has a process that she has to follow. She has to. She is a re legitimate scientist. She is a genetics doctor or, or a, a, vet, DNA a doctor. veterinary. Yeah. She's a vet, she's a veterinary doctor. With a, yeah. Okay, there you go. And she's the direct. She's director of a laboratory. There is a due process. Mm -hmm. You. It, it's great. It's great if you're a hobbyist and you want to put something on your website that says Sasquatch is real because she says so, but if it's not reviewed by the people who understand the data, it doesn't mean anything. Because I don't know, I don't know how to read genetic code. I don't know how to read molecular data. I need somebody to verify that and then break it down for me. So, which is the peer, the peers from that right. field. And then as far. As far as groups not sharing uh, information, that that's a shame because I really believe that in order to move, uh, create a movement, everyone has to work together, and that's not really happening. Um, you know, it's great that that people are funding big projects, and I understand that you're going to be cautious about your results, you're going to be cautious about your material, you're going to be cautious about what you find, and and. Uh, and, and you're going to be cautious about, about your research. But at the same time, like I said, when I first got in this and I started making calls and I said, look, I'm a filmmaker, I tell stories, I'm not interested in, 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 in you know, getting out there and, and shooting images of Bigfoot. I mean, that'd be nice, but that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to take the evidence, review the evidence, and put it in a presentable form, format for people to, to make judgment. For the general public to follow along with, that's what I'm trying to do. And what happens? Nope. I mean, the one one guy I called. I mean, all he did was basically cut me off and just tell me about how how I'm going to fail like the others have failed. And I said, No, you don't understand. I'm not trying to film Bigfoot. And he's like, No, you're never gonna film Bigfoot. If I can't film Bigfoot, then you can't film Bigfoot. I've been doing this for so long, and I kept saying. No, you don't understand. I'm not trying to film Bigfoot. I'm trying to talk to people who are trying to film Bigfoot, see, so get some insight on the topic. And all he would say is, no, I can't help you. I just don't feel like you're going to be successful. Wow. So, you know, that, that was my first, the first two people I talked to, you know? And uh, that's when I just said, you know... Uh, did you think because of that there was going to be the same problem with everybody else? Did you feel that way? I, I kind of did, but you know what? The higher you go up, the cooler the person is, and I wrote Dr. Meldrum a letter, I wrote uh, Adam Davies a letter, and these guys who were at the top of the field had a completely different, different take on it. Mm -hmm. And that just told, tells you who the real top dogs are. Mm -hmm. There's there some guys who are just fronting and trying to act like bulldogs and be bigger than they are, but they're not. But the so, real big So they were interested really in, in, in getting them their, 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 their fame out. And not really proving. They're saying that their research, the right. researchers trying to prove Bigfoot exists, but that's not really their agenda. You think they is more about getting themselves on videos and selling the and, and yeah. pushing out the little 
uh, it, things that they do out to, to the public? It certainly feels that way. It certainly feels that way. You know, I don't know, I don't see like large amounts of money in this field. I, so I'm not doing this to, to go after the money. I'm not doing, I'm not doing this to become a millionaire. I, I, that could that could be furthest from the truth. I'm doing this because it's fascinating. It could change, uh, it can change anthropology. It could change primatology. It could change storytelling. It okay, could change but, but, but and, you know? and I agree with you with that. But what about if a big TV station like Animal Planet wants to pick up one of your documentaries? Are you are you gonna tell them no? Oh no, of course not. But I know as someone who's out here in Hollywood and working mm -hmm. on 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 television shows that even you know even doing something on Animal Planet or whatever. That's not a, as big a payday as people think. There's, it's a, you know, it's a good, good, good living, but it's not this huge multi-million dollar payday, you know, unless you end up with a, a franchise that that is like um, uh, ancient aliens that just goes through the roof and, and, and the speakers are going on tour and stuff like that. You know, it's just a living. I mean, I have friends on television shows um, who have sold shows, and, and, and once they sell shows... They go on to the next one and, and they make a great living doing it, but it's not the huge payday that everybody thinks it's going to be. So you have to be making a lot of shows and selling them to really make some some amount of money to really live comfortable. Yeah, I mean there's there's a few guys out here who who uh, um, who who do who do quite well, you know, okay. whether it's uh, the Simon Cowell or or, or whatever, you know, um, Rob uh, what's his name Burnett, the Survivor Series mm -hmm. guy, you know. So there's some big producers, you know, they, they hit their paydays, but these small shows on Discovery Channel, on Animal Planet shows, they're they're working gigs, you know. And I mean, sure, you you get you get footage of, of a real life Sasquatch in his natural habitat uh, on a regular basis, you know. Uh, you get you you're gonna have some groundbreaking footage, and you're going to you're going to profit from it, no question. You're going to be a rock star in the field. But I'm not trying to do that. You know, I'm just trying to present information and tell a story. So, so, so in terms of that, you know, no, now that you, you know, that people know from what we're talking about, you are in Hollywood and you, you know about how the things work out there. Yeah. Do you think that the Erickson project is more of, of a business of, of a money making business than it really is trying to prove Bigfoot? Because um, supposedly they have a, a you know a video or documentaries that come out and people are here's how I here's how I see the Erickson project and I this is just theoretical mm -hmm. so take it for what it is I think maybe they have collected some some decent amount of evidence but if they had groundbreaking video that would be out by now you can't sit on something like that because if it exists and it's on film that means Someone else can get it. Someone else can beat you to the punch. And if they're trying to profit off something like that, it doesn't make sense that they'd be sitting on it for so long. Yet some people are saying, well, they're waiting to present it with the DNA evidence, uh, and, and that way they can present it as a package so it can't be denied. Well, then if they need that extra punch, that me that's telling me that the evidence, the video evidence and picture evidence that they have isn't as convincing on its own. It needs... The DNA to be proven to exist. To, to go with it, exactly. Yeah. That's just that's just theoretical. I could be a hundred percent wrong about that. Um, as far as like a big Hollywood deal, um, documentaries don't get big Hollywood deals. They just don't. I, if this is something that's going to change the world, it's it's possible, I suppose, that you know they're waiting to do this with the study. But it's hard to say. Just documentary filmmaking isn't the isn't the uh, isn't the golden bucket in, in, in Hollywood at all. It's, it's, the, it's, it's art film, you know? And art film is traditionally not the, not the uh, way to, to get rich in Hollywood, you know? So the Erickson Project, I, I have some reservations about it. Um, you see the same people from Monster Quest, you see the same people from Is It Real, um, you, see, you see all the same authors, all a part of the Erickson Project. It's hard for me to believe that this is going to be something extremely groundbreaking. I think it's going to be good. Don't get me wrong. I think they're going to put together a compelling package. I do. I don't know if the rest of the world is going to think that just yet. Okay. Well, okay. Now, 
in terms of, of, of what your plans are for the future, since mm -hmm. now you launch yourself in the wonderful world of the Bigfoot community, <laughs> uh, you know, what, what are your plans? What are you thinking about? What do you want to do uh, with all well, this? I, I have a few things going on. I have a few things in the cooker I can't really talk about. Um, you know, but there, there is, uh, there are a couple of things in the works, and I'm hoping to step it up, and I'm hoping to present it to, to everyone very soon. Uh, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be viral. I think it's going to be fun, and I think it's going to be good content for the community, and I think that's what this community really needs. Now, if I everything works out with the people I'm talking to, I'll have the support I need to create that content. Okay. Yeah. Now, in, in terms of, uh, you know, of uh, so far, you know, you, you've only been uh, with the community, you know, in such a short while, you know, what do you think, what do you think uh, about some of the other projects, like, uh, you know, the Olympic project that's mm -hmm. going on, you know, we have, you know, the issues yeah. of, uh, you know, what happened with, with certain hoaxes that have happened before in the past. <laughs> and, you know, e you know even with, with the whole before itself, some people are, start, yeah. are even questioning that. You know, they, they, they want to get more information and, you know, it just hasn't been given now. Or, mm -hmm. or if it ever is, uh, we don't know. But, you know, what do you think, what do you think is going to happen before May when, when yeah. I think that the stuff is going to come out from, from the Dean? I think that that's my prediction. I predict that uh, uh, in May when they do that conference or on or uh, that month or the week before that uh, May 1st uh, we're going to find out if Bigfoot is real or not which I, that's my yeah. prediction I could be 100% wrong but I think that might be the time well let's talk about what we already know we already know that three samples have been collected um, we're not sure where these samples totally came from there's some question about the Sierra shootings blah 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 um, what I do know is Dr. Meldrum is, has integrity, and if she says there were three samples from three separate expeditions, then I will believe that. If she says that the DNA results have been repeated and can verify a species, I will believe that. If she says it is a subspecies of Homo sapien, Homo sapiens hirsuti is, uh, is, is what everyone's talking about, I will believe that. Now, will that Will that map be enough for everyone else? I don't know, but here's what I can tell you. It's going to get buzzier. It's going to get more viral. Come May, whether the general public and the general media decide to believe that Bigfoot is real, there's going to be a buzz about the community. And now you're seeing people come to, come to light teasing us with their photos, teasing us with their stories about what they already have in prep for that because they they want to they want to be a part of this discovery you know they everybody wants to be a part of it it's it's a it's it's a big it's a big deal to this community so between now and may i think you're going to see more hopes to, to so you, you think so you think somebody else is going to come out with another photo or uh, or, or something or a video or something i mean you don't have to go much further than than find facebook find blog squash to see what kind of crap people are willing to put in, in your face and sell well, it. Well, and, and believe, right, because, I mean, there's, there's a lot of times that we've seen stuff that, even me, I mean, it's my opinion, but I, I take it, I don't know how people could believe it, that's, that's yeah. Bigfoot in that, but, yeah, yeah. everybody has their view, you know, naturally. I, I think you're going to see it step up, step up. I mean, our, our friend Michael Merchant has just been issued a challenger from Hopster number one, you know, so... Uh, they're they're gonna stay active. And oh, so you, so you did get to see the video of of uh, oh, yeah, of Zoho yeah, one yeah, being challenged funny. by Rick Dyer. Oh my goodness! I, I got to tell you right now that I think uh, Michael Merchant is one of the best new faces on the scene. He's a, he brings on a refreshing view. He brings on a scientific view. He brings a very valid background. I'm a, I'm a fan of Michael Merchant and and what he is trying to do. He what people I think misunderstand about him. Is that, is that he, what they don't get about him is that he really wants to find Sasquatch just as much as anybody else. But he's willing to ask the hard questions. And he's willing to make fun of the people who believe too easily. Um, 
you can believe, but you don't have to be a sucker, you know? And I think right now, because of this validation that we're getting from the, the, the Ketchum camp, because of this validation, yes, it's real. Now, it's so easy to sucker people. You're going to see the hoaxers come out, and between now and May, we gotta, we got to keep an extra close eye on the material that surfaces. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you, so you think that we should be more selective in what people are bringing to the plate in terms of that? So, so you think that there was unfair how a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I myself, you know, <laughs> have my opinion on the Hobie photo. And yeah. I, you think that it was unfair that a lot of other people, not just me, a lot of other people questioned it. You think that yeah, was unfair? Yeah, I, I, th I think the whole situation is a little unfortunate. I don't know. You know, I don't. I don't think anybody deserves to be blasted as hard as we blasted her. Um, but she, at the same time, you shouldn't be supporting things like that as easily when, when the the story starts to unravel and you start defending and defending and defending and defending and changing the story to try and defend it. It just seems, you just start setting yourself up for for, for uh, more, you know, more attacks. criticism and more, I more, think, okay. you know. What's that? You know, you said you said I was thinking more attacks or criticism when you said it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you, you open yourself up to that kind of criticism. And you know what? It it, it it's I yeah, prefer but, to try but to be in this case, wasn't wasn't the criticism more attention. directly towards the photo? Was it really about about you know, the Sahobi? That you know, in, you know, in my case, I I was talking about the photo. Yeah. You know, I, I um, you know. Well, well, I mean. The photo is only as valid as the person present. The evidence is only as good as the person presenting it. Mm -hmm. And Melissa Hobie is a very respected person, you know, in the field. So I I feel that once you get to a point where people are listening to you, you have to have a certain amount of responsibility, you know. Mm -hmm. So whether it's it's um, um, what's his name Anderson and and what's his name from Fine Blob Squash or Melissa Hobie. Or um, you know any, anyone, it, it, even even someone like Jeff Meldrum, you have to have respect for the evidence you put on the table. You have to treat it. Uh, you have to treat it with respect because it's your reputation, and that evidence is always going to be tied to the reputation of the person presenting it. We got great footage from Freeman. You know the Freeman footage is great, but it means nothing because why? He's been caught. He was caught before he died, you know, hoaxing people, right? So, uh, you know, what are, what are what are we gonna do with that? We're nothing. Most people just throw that out, throw that one out of the books, you know. Doesn't count, you know. Well, it, it, it is the saying that people people will remember the good things you do, but they will always forever remember that one bad deed, bad deed that you did. Yeah, you, know, it can I mean, you can do a hundred good things, to feel like this. but that one bad deed that you did will always remember you more than your good deeds. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And and uh, you know, so it's time. But you know, there's a lot of great stuff at the same time happening right now. I'm really excited about the idea of of this being, you know, uh, closely related to to humans being being. I, I think the the first number was 99.5% human DNA. You know, it's just a, I don't know, is it just a pathology? Is it that, that di differentiates uh, them from us? Is it, is it um, you know, are we, have we interbred with something along the way? I mean, are, are these, I'm just, it's an exciting time and it's a positive time and, you know, it, it's, it's fun. Do you think that 2012 is a year, Bigfoot? 2012 is a year for so many things. I mean, the Mayans, had it right, you know, I don't like to get into that hokey kind of stuff, but it seems like t 2012 is really a, a tell, tell year with, with the way things are going with, with the election, with the way things have gone with the economy, with the way things have gone with Bigfoot, with the way things have gone, you know, just, you pick the subject, and, and it's, everything seems to be coming to some kind of head here in 2012, it's exciting, it's fun, and um, you know, I, I'm just I'm just. Uh, what do you think about that <laughs> new, that new finding that just happened? That they found this new uh, species of uh, of of a uh, 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 of a homo. Was it what was it that new article that came out? Um, just today it came out on Fox. Did you get to see that? Uh, I didn't see. I, I I heard the rumblings. I saw some things on Twitter, but I, I didn't get to, a chance to read anything yeah. yet. 
Um, they, they have a new uh, new species that was found. Uh, I think within Indonesia, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Indonesia. They they had they they have done a lot of uh, uh, bones up that they haven't been able to totally identify out of uh, Indonesia. I spoke about that a bit. Um, Gigantopithecus and and um, Megantropus had a lot of subspecies that they're finding. There was like four or five ver uh, subspecies of Megantropus that were found in Indonesia, and, um, and 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 descendants of Homo erectus. And you know, it's this this is a crazy thing. What people don't realize is that some ridiculous amount. Uh, I don't know that I don't have the number in front of me right now, but something like. 70, 80 percent of all human beings on the planet still carry Neanderthal DNA. I mean, what does that mean for us? You know, what what kind of subspecies will we become in the future? You know, the environments change and species change, and the DNA all it can alter. When a wild, when a domestic pig becomes feral, its DNA alters. It actually changes. You know. Does that happen to us? Do, when people go feral, does that Neanderthal come out? Does, do, is there a humanistic shift of some of some sort? I don't know. It's uh, it's anthropology is the craziest subject. It it, it it at the same time it it makes perfect sense. Just when it starts to make sense, the biggest monkey wrench will be thrown into the middle of the the pile of bones, and you're like starting all all over again. The the human family tree. Someone in your um, forum said it best. Uh, I don't remember who it was. The the human family tree is more like a bush. <laughs> it's just yeah. it's just it doesn't branch out, you know, symmetrically at all. It it's all over the place. Well, I, I mean, and, and this is my theory. I, I think that that maybe if Bigfoot does exist, I think that um, I even wrote an article about it, which will be coming out soon here. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna come out today as we're speaking right now, but I wrote an article and I believe I you know, I may I may you know, you know, doing all this research that I possibly think that Bigfoot is actually a mutation that happened somewhere in our evolution. Uh there's a absolutely there, there's a there's a correlation to that uh in Madagascar, uh the lemurs that, that live in Madagascar, well they have actually mutations that some lemurs are very similar to themselves. But mm -hmm. they cannot interbreed, even though they look they're very identical to each other mm -hmm. because they they're in different parts of the island. Uh, that species that are very similar they cannot interbreed because genetically they're not the same. They look the same on the outside, right. they're not the same. And also, uh, there's a there's an animal uh, called a fossa that looks like a cat and looks like it looks like a species of the big cats, but it actually is under the the mongoose uh, yes. a family tree. That uh, and, and it's a dimension, it's, like, it's, a, it's a mutation that happened, and it, it, it is the, it is, it, and it's a predator uh, that looks like a, like a cat, but it's not actually a cat. Right. And, and so it mutated into something to survive that's very cat-like. So it hunts right. the same way and does everything like that. So based on that, you know, with Bigfoot anything is possible, you know, I mean, there's so many descriptions of Bigfoot, who knows how exactly how he looks. Well, you know, and, and that's an, an interesting point. We find a lot of distorted footprints, and they're all forensically uh, validated, you know? And then, so why are, uh, why are there so many distortions in the footprint? I mean, the first thing that happens when, excuse me, <laughs> the first thing that happens when a, a population dwindles is inbreeding. And now if we're talking about... Um, you know, a very small breeding population that's that's endangered. I mean, critically endangered. If we're, if we're talking just a few hundred uh, individuals in, in in several places in the on the on across the country, you know, the inbreeding occurs. The first thing we go are, are the digits. You know, the the, the fingers, the web feet. You know, uh, uh, m melted toes. I forget what that syndrome's called. You know. These things, these pathologies, start to start to enhance and become a part of of their generation. And what would normally take, um, you know, millions of, of years in, in evolutionary terms to like adapt, you know, a, a simple pathology 
like that that gets passed passed down in a small gene pool can really be amplified. I mean, I don't know the science behind it, but I, I've read a few articles, um, some a few good theories uh, uh, about that, which is why so many of the footprints are are, are altered. You know, yeah. three yeah, times. Yeah, even, even Michael, uh, mm-hmm. which is Snow Walker uh, Prime, we even had a conversation about that. He, as a biologist, he thinks that that could be a possibility that there is some inbreeding if Bigfoot does exist. So it's very interesting that you also said that uh, when I had that conversation with Michael, who is a biologist. So, yeah. you know, so Ro, you know, you, you know, we've had a conversation now for just about uh, 45, 46 minutes. Mm-hmm. And uh, hey, I want to thank you uh, for taking the time. Uh, and I want to uh, leave you with this question. Um, in terms of, of, of so far, how you've uh, you know shared your 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 ideas with the community, mm-hmm. and you've you've gotten feedback, you've gotten the positive and the negative. Yeah. I mean, the has that uh, made you change in terms of yourself on how you perceive the community that that you were initially an outsider from? Um. Yeah. As as I get into the community deeper and deeper, I see. The, I start to find uh, beyond the passion, the intelligence in the community. You know, I always kind of, I was, I had a little bit of a uh, uh, apprehension before that. I, I, the the first few people I met just didn't. I was like, well, maybe this is why everybody thinks we're crazy because we sound crazy. But the deeper I get involved, and the more people I meet, and the more people that start coming forward, I start to see the intelligence of the community. You have to be a smart person to start considering these abstract ideas. Thinking out of the box is not an easy thing to do. It is very, very easy for a human being to live inside a comfort zone and not challenge themselves and not be looked at outside of the norm. So it takes a real intelligent, brave, and a little crazy person sometimes to step outside of that box, start challenging ideas, to start looking at things differently than you normally would, the way your parents do tell you to look at things. It takes a special kind of person, and those people that I've been meeting have been fantastic. Well, thank you for taking the time, and we'll talk to you soon again. Thanks for having me on the show today. All right. Later, brother. www.sasquatchlore.com www.sasquatchlore.com